Okay, so if you think you have strong basic math skills, well, that is fantastic. But that also indicates that you should be able to solve this problem pretty easily without using a calculator. So let's take a look at the problem. We have 80% of, or 80% then parentheses, 30 plus 40 divided by 4 times 5 and parentheses. Now we do have a multiple choice question here, and let's take a look at our answers. So A is 24, B is 2 fifths, C is 43, and D is 64. All right, so once again, no calculators, but uh, if you could figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to walk through step by step exactly how to solve this problem without using a calculator. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so once again, here is our problem. Now, the correct answer is over here, right? So one of these is the correct answer. So if you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I know how to do this, but that was like 40 years ago. Well, at least take a guess, but we have 80% of 30 plus 40 divided by 4 uh, times 5. All right, so let's take a look at the answer. The correct answer here is D, 64. Now, if you got this right, well, that is great, and you definitely get a happy face and an A-plus for your knowledge of basic math. And uh, for those of you that didn't get this right, well, it's probably because you've been away from math for a long time. So if you don't practice basic mathematics or arithmetic, you know, because certainly all of us have so much technology, calculators, our phone, you know, you, you, you really need to practice these skills or they're going to go away. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the solution right now. Again, no calculators. And here is our problem. So I think for most people, uh, if they got this wrong, or if you got this wrong, the error probably came in one of two places. Right now, I'm just kind of only taking a guess, but uh, it's an educated guess based upon, based upon my years of teaching mathematics. So the first error uh, probably occurred in here, and another error probably occurred right here. Okay, so really we have like three problems in one. So the first problem, or the first part of this problem, or kind of like a problem within a problem, is we need to understand how to deal with percent without a calculator. Now over here we have addition and division and multiplication, so we need to know a thing or two about the order of operations, or PEMDAS. And then uh, lastly, we're gonna have to uh, know how to deal with fractions, and I'll show you that in just one second. But uh, as I indicated, for those of you that uh, may still have to take a math test or, you know, even if you're not, you know, taking a math course, you know, if you have a multiple choice question, you know, don't feel bad about guessing, you know, take an educated guess. Now, if you have 80% of this, you know, just, you know, uh, just pick anything. All right, 24 looks pretty good to me. Unfortunately, it is wrong because D is the right answer, but at least you tried. Okay, so let's go ahead and get at this right now. And here is our problem. So as I uh, kind of indicated, there is like three problems in one. Now the first part of this problem that we need to understand is that we're dealing with a problem with multiple math operators, okay? And uh, when you have multiple math operators in a problem, now I'm using this kind of term operator. What is a math operator? Well, things like addition, division, multiplication, subtraction. These are things that you can do with numbers, and we call these operators in mathematics. So uh, depending on the order uh, you take, you're going to come up with different values. So there's only one correct order to do addition, division, multiplication, and subtraction if you have multiple different operations in your problem. Okay, so the first error I think a lot of people uh, made is the following. Okay, a lot of people probably multiplied here first, and if you did that, uh, if you made that mistake, well, I'm glad that you did because this gives me an opportunity to clear up a very common misunderstanding about something called the order of operations. All right, so as I indicated, we have to know this thing right here called PEMDAS, and this tells us the correct order to do a math problem when we have different operations involved. 
Okay, so uh, this is an acronym. These letters stand for something. Matter of fact, I'll just tell you a little uh, cute phrase that you can uh, use to remember PEMDAS, and that is, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Once again, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Now, I don't know what Aunt Sally did, but I thank her for her wonderful contribution to mathematics. So let's go ahead and get into this right now. So PEMDAS, this is the order that we need to follow to do this problem. Now, before I explain PEMDAS, let's just talk about this percent real quick. So we're going to find 80% of the value of whatever this is. Okay, so we'll talk about percent here in just one second. But really, we are finding the percent of a number. And that number is whatever this is going to be equal to. All right, so PEMDAS, what does this stand for? Well, let's go ahead and get into this right now. This is a checklist, and we follow this checklist from left to right. So P stands for parentheses. So if we have parentheses in a math problem, and of course uh, in this problem we do, uh, well, that's where we need to start. But uh, it's not just these type of parentheses. It could be brackets like this or these type of squiggly brackets. Really, technically, this P stands for grouping symbols. So it's the way we group uh, numbers together. So if I have 30 divided by 15 times 2, well, I can group the, uh, this problem this way. So if I put parentheses around these two numbers, that means start here. Okay. Now, if I do that uh, and then change the parentheses, well, then I can I have to start right here because uh, these parentheses are grouping these numbers. So P stands for grouping symbols, but just think of it as parentheses. All right. So if you have parentheses, that's where we need to start. One more thing about uh, uh, parentheses. So if your problem has multiple parentheses, and certainly can have that, you just work from the innermost parentheses first, get all the math done in there until you're down to one number, and, and then just kind of continue to expand out. All right, so that is what P is. Now, remember, not every math problem is going to have parentheses, but you just review this checklist, and if there's something on the checklist, well, then you have to address it. All right, so E, what does E stand for? Well, E stands for basically powers, okay? So if you have a power, that's what you're going to do next. Now, you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, that's an E. Why don't they put a P there? Well, that would be confusing, right? Because you don't know if we're going to do powers in the parentheses or parentheses and powers. So the E really stands for exponents. So when you have an exponent, this little top number in the uh, top right, this little number right here is called the exponent. This bottom number down here is called the base. The entire thing is a power. So E really stands for exponents, but you can think of uh, this as powers. All right, so now we're going to get to the part where a lot of people, uh, you know, get confused. And let me just tell you what these uh, letters stand for. So M, D, A, and S. M stands for multiplication. D stands for division. A stands for addition. And S stands for subtraction. Now, some of you might be saying, all right, Mr. YouTube Math Man, that's a terrible little uh, thing. Uh, you know, part of uh, the fun of me making these YouTube videos is I can be informal. It's not like I'm teaching in a formal classroom. So I like to make these little crazy expressions because as a math teacher, this is kind of the, some of the looks that I've seen where people are like, hey, what's going on here? You know, and I'm pretty I'm pretty sure that I was, you know, had these kind of facial expressions way back in the good old days when I didn't understand something as well. So don't feel bad. But here is the next thing on our checklist, right? So you might be saying, isn't it M, Mr. YouTube Math Man? Because we're going in order from left to right, P-E-M-D-A-S. So here... We have 40 divided by 4. This is division. This is multiplication. So why isn't it uh, f uh, 4 times 5 right here, this multiplication part? Why is that not correct? Because it's multiplication, right? We should do multiplication before division. Well, that's not the way this checklist works. Okay, so how does this actually work? Well, what we uh, do here is uh, the next thing on our checklist is actually multiplication or division. Okay, so we're going to do parentheses first, then E, exponents, powers. But now we're not going to just do multiplication. We're going to do multiplication or division, whatever we see first from left to right. Okay, now you can't really have two, um, you know, PEMDAS or little acronyms because that would be confusing. We can't be like, all right, we have P-E-M-D-A-S. Or we could have P-E-D-M-A-S because these are two different acronyms. So we just write it out this way, but it's understood that M and D is multiplication or division, whatever you see first from left to right. 
Now, of course, that's going to have implications here because division uh, comes first uh, from left to right, not multiplication, right? So this is going to be our first move. So some of you probably already are figuring this out. And addition and subtraction work the same way. We're going to do addition or subtraction, whatever we, see, whatever we see first, from left to right. Okay, so that was a lot of explaining when it comes to the order of operations. But, you know, it's one of the uh, uh, things that I've seen as a math teacher. If I had to say some of the, like, the top three things where people get most math problems wrong, it's because a lack of uh, full understanding of PEMDAS and the order of operations. So that's why I like to kind of thoroughly review it. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this problem now that now that we understand the order of operations. So we have to follow our checklist from left to right. So do we have parentheses? Indeed we do. So that means we need to do all the math inside of the parentheses, okay, before we start considering this other stuff. So let's just go through our checklist. So now inside of the parentheses, do we have another set of parentheses? No. Do we have any exponents or powers? No. Do we have any multiplication or division? Yes. Okay. What do we see first? Well, this is division right here, right? So this little fraction bar means division. So what do we see first from left to right? We see division first, right? So division um, is the first thing we see from left to right, not multiplication. So this is where we need to start the problem. Okay. So let's go ahead and get into this right now. So, you know, this is pretty simple arithmetic. Again, we're not using our calculator, so 40 divided by 4 is 10. Now, notice that I'm just taking one step, okay? Now, when you're not uh, using your calculator and you're doing a math problem by hand, write one step, then write another step. Be nice and neat and clear. Uh, you know, even if you know the math, if you, if you try to take too many steps in you know, uh, just in other words, you don't want to write out all the steps. You are going to dramatically increase the probability of making an error. All right, so here is 80% times or 80% of 30 plus 10 times 5. So uh, multiplication definitely um, uh, is uh, before addition. So now we're going to go ahead and take care of that right now. So 10 times 5 is obviously 50, but we're still not done. Uh, working inside of the parentheses. So now we have 30 plus 50, which of course is 80. Okay, so here is our problem at this stage. And uh, I think this kind of takes care of the PEMDAS or the order of operations part of the problem. Okay, so now we need to discuss uh, percent. So what is 80% of 80? Well, obviously you need to know a thing or two about percent. So let's go ahead and take the next step and that is uh, having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, I wouldn't stop this lovely math video if I did not need your support. And uh, really what I'm trying to do on YouTube is uh, teach math in a clear and understandable way. Now, that's my goal. And uh, hopefully, you know, my teaching style is resonating with a lot of you. And that, if that's the case, well, that is fantastic. Now, I've been on YouTube for many, many years and I've posted well over 3,000 videos. But, uh, you know, I really that don't count per se because I've just been, you know, uh, you know, on YouTube for such a long time. But what I try to do is I try to make math interesting, okay? And, and I try to cover uh, topics from basic math to advanced math. So if you like my teaching style, I have a ton of content in algebra, geometry, even some trigonometry and some calculus. But uh, my best stuff is going to be found in my math courses. So you can find links to those in the description of this video. So if you need help with basic mathematics, there's two core, uh, two courses that I would strongly recommend. One is my Math Foundations course, and the other is my Math Skills Rebuilder course, right? And uh, both of these courses are covering uh, the stuff that we're talking about in this particular video. But uh, anyways, uh, I hope you would consider hitting that subscribe button. It really does help me out on YouTube. And if you're gonna do that, hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about percentage. So what is percent? Now, if I gave you a little pop quiz and I said define percent or percentage, uh, some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, it's that symbol. Well, yes, uh, that is correct. But what is percent? Okay, what's the definition of percent? Well, basically, the, uh, the definition of percent is when we compare a number to 100, okay? Or when we write a number where as a fraction where the denominator is 100. So when we compare that number to 100, well, 
that is what percent is. So 80% is equivalent to the fraction 80 over 100. Now here, we're trying to find the percent of a number. Now let's just kind of uh, look at a very simple problem. If I said find 50% of 20, okay? So most people could figure this out even if you don't know the math, right? So 50%, you might be saying, hey, Mr. Two Math Man, that's the same thing as half. So what's one half of 20? Well, it's 10, okay? But uh, most people, you know, when they do percent problems, in other words, if I said find 17% of uh, 322, well, most people are going to say, all right, I got to change this percent to a decimal, so that's 0.17. Then I have to multiply by 322, and that is correct. So uh, when you change a percent to a decimal, matter of fact, let me just show you this real quick. So 17%, when we change this to a decimal, it's going to be 0.17. Now, you might be saying, uh, you know, where's the decimal point here, Mr. YouTube Math Man? Well, it's right here, okay? So it's 17.0%. So when we write a uh, percent as a decimal, what we do is we move the decimal point over two places to the left, but that's just the result of dividing by 100. So when I divide this by 100 or compare this number to 100, it moves the decimal point over two places to the left. So I can write this as 0.17 or 1700, okay? So it doesn't always have to be a decimal. You can express a percent as a fraction. But of course, you need to know a thing or two about what percent actually means. Okay, so 80% is the same thing as 80 uh, over 100 or 8 uh, tenths, right? Because I can simply, you know, reduce this uh, down. But uh, anyways, here, you know, because we're not using a calculator, it's probably going to be easier just to work with fractions. So let's go ahead and do this now. Okay, so 80% is the same thing as 80 over 100, okay, or 0.8, but I'm gonna work with fractions so we can go ahead and cross cancel these zeros. So 8 tenths, I could reduce this down further. Uh, two goes into 8, 4, and two goes into 10, 5. So uh, 80%, okay, is equivalent to this fraction right here, 4 fifths. So really, our problem comes down to the following. So if I wanna find 80% of 80, well, it's the same thing as finding four-fifths of 80. Now, again, we're not using our calculator, and you could do this in a different uh, manner as well. But as I indicated, there's another part of this problem. So let's just do a quick review. So we, first, we talked about the order of operations, PEM, DOS, and then we uh, talked about percent, right? So what is percent, how to change a percent to a decimal or a fraction, and now we are talking about fraction operation. So it's like three three little problems in one in this particular problem. So now we want to find four-fifths of 80 or multiply four-fifths times 80. So how do we multiply fractions? Well, what we need to do is multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So here, uh, this right here, this four-fifths outside of this 80, this means multiplication. But uh, a lot of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I don't see this as a fraction. We'll just put it over one here. This is the uh, that's one is the denominator, 80 is the numerator, and then here is our denominator, and here is our numerator. A lot of people get confused with that. But anyways, let's go ahead and do the simple math. So we have four times 80 over uh, five times one. Or what we can do here is just simply uh, take this five and divide it into 80. So 80 divided by five is 16. So we have four times 16 is 64, or you can take that four, multiply by 80, and then divide by five. All these simple uh, calculations are pretty easy to do without a calculator. But anyways, this is our final answer. And if you got this right, you know, even if you didn't do the steps exactly the way I did it, well, of course, you have to do the order of operations uh, correctly. But if you address the percent part of this problem in your own special way, well, that is fantastic. As long as you got the right answer and you know what you're, what you're doing, that's what counts. All right, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.